Sitting in the background of the old, old East India shipyard. The boat that you see in the front is the RAN, the ex-Navy P-37. It is 37 meters long, six and three quarter meters wide, and at the present it has a draft of 1.8 meters. The hull is high tensile steel, seven millimeters thick, and the superstructure is aluminum. The Navy displacement with full crew, with a complement of 23 to 26 men, armament and all, was 170 ton. The displacement is one inch for every 5,000 pounds that you add. The boat was built and completed in 1964. It carried a crew of 23 to 26 men, is equipped with two Maybach Mercedes-Benz engines that were rated as high as 2,000 horsepower each, but under Navy use, they derated it to 1,300 horsepower and about 1,300 RPM. This gives you a good idea of the bow of the boat, the condition of the hull, and the plates. Now you're looking down at the superstructure, which is aluminum. You see the uh, radar antenna, the windows for the bridge, and the windows for the control room. As well as the radar antenna, you see four 1,000 watt floodlights on the mast with the antennas. This is the view of the stern of the boat, looking down the deck. And here's the plates from the stern. Showing your um, draft at the present. By taking off the small pump house behind the, the stack, you can clear the deck and make a fresh deck of almost 60 feet. This is the starboard side of the boat looking up where you can see the anchor winch a davit for the anchor and a bit of the superstructure 
This is another view of the bow and the stern side of the boat. And you have another view now of the bridge. The mast. And what you see on the lookout station is a sling for the lifeboat. It isn't normally there, but it's there now to be out of our way. Looking down the stern of the boat from up here. This gives you an idea of the original windows on the uh, control operating room with the sweeping uh, cleaner and all for uh, the North Sea. They've been removed off of the RAN, but they're available to be put on again. Others are available if they will want desirable. There's also Two of them were originally, or three, were on the uh, bridge, too. The windows on the RAN have been removed with the electric controls on them for wiping. They could be replaced, but I prefer to replace the entire larger windows with windows out of a ferry boat that are much larger than these. Now, the rest of the control room, you'll see some of the equipment that is on board. You have a radar unit coupled up to a plotter that is military equipment but obsolete. All the radio con and communication equipment that the Navy had, almost, was removed from the boat before it was sold. But on board is the, all the controls for operating the engines and the generators from the operating room. In front of you now is the plotter that's coupled to the radar. And they have no literature on it, whether it is good or usable yet or not. In front of the control room is a small sonar room. Nothing much left in it, but a lot of the old uh, electronic cables from the uh, military installation. The room is approximately six foot by seven foot. This is still the sonar room, looking at it from the other corner. With the steps going into the control room, the operating room. Beside the sonar room is the radio room, both of these in front of the operating room. This gives you an idea of some of the
control panel still in the boat, even though the electronics have been removed. This is uh, the port side of the radio room, giving an idea of some of the uh, space and workbench that still remain. We are now in front of the engine room in the officer's quarters. These are the steps coming down. At the foot of the stairs, to the right, the first room is that of the first mate. There are double beds in each of the three officers' cabins. This gives you a bit of, of an idea of the desk or his writing table and the equipment. And this is an idea of the sink that is in each one of the rooms, as well as the lock, the clothes locker, and the desk, and the bunks. Bow. The second room going towards the bow is that belonging to the captain. It is equipped just a, almost the same as the other rooms, with perhaps a little nicer plywood molding inside. Though the top bunk has dropped down to make a sofa, uh, that room too has the uh, double bunk. Uh, looking towards the doorway, or behind the door, you see the uh, sink for the captain and his clothes locker. The heater and the end of the bud of the bed. The third room on the right is for the chief engineers, two beds in it. And it too is equipped the same as the others with the wash basin uh, lockers and everything. The forward cabin is a relatively big room for the crew's mess. They have foot lockers underneath the, uh, the seats the whole way around the room. The room is approximately 18 feet long. You see the construction somewhat of the uh, ribs of the boat. There's insulation on the uh, next to, on the plating, over the plating. This is a cruise mess room looking towards the stern. There's a ladder where they have their passageway up to the deck. A hallway on top with some closets. This was some of the equipment that had been put in for their use, but much of the stuff has been removed. The, the TVs and things that the crews had used has pretty well all been removed, including a little refrigerator. But the lockers, there are still lockers there for things for the for games and things, or reading of books and things for the crew. Now you have a good view of those steps coming down into the officers' quarters from the deck with the uh, officers' rooms now on your right side and the uh, looking towards the stern. The galley will be the next room we look at, and it's right here on the left. Now, below deck, you see the whole, the cover for the 
trap door or the hatch cover. Below deck is a cold storage and food storage with a ceiling height of about five feet. There you have the doors going into two of the refrigerator units and beside me just to, to the right is a third uh, unit. Now we're inside the galley. You're looking at the big cooking range. The door conceals part of it. The ovens are underneath and there's boilers underneath the ovens. You have a stainless steel counter going around in an L shape and above the counter you have their working cabinets for the cooks. From this point here you're looking at a, a recently installed electric heater for hot water for use in the kitchen and you have the second unit that was more like the original installation for heating water for both the kitchen and for the officer's toilet. See the two heaters? Looking at it from another side, you see the two heaters, the counter, and the end of the, of the galley room. Now we're looking at the officer's washroom, the water closet, the wash basin, and you can see the plumbing for the shower. Now we're looking into the officer's mess. And this is one of our nicest rooms in the boat. You have the table where the officers ate. You have a sofa, which makes into a, a bed or a double bed. You have storage units. a kind of a work table and things for the officer's convenience. This is the uh, one of the cabinets that's in it. Now we have another view, close-up view, of the steps going out of the officer's quarters up to the hallway where they go out on the deck. Oops, that isn't what I want. Now we're looking, we're down in the engine room and we're looking at the ladder where we enter from the hallway up above. Now to the right, we're looking at one of the big main engines. It's a Mercedes, it's a Maybach Mercedes with a big turbocharger. This is the, another view of the back end of the Maybach Mercedes engine the main engine on the starboard side. Now we'll switch over and look at the main engine on the uh, port side. Now what you're looking at are the heads. The most of the engine is below the floor here. The engines are probably have been rated as high as 2,000 horsepower. 1,650 RPM. The Navy geared them, or derated them down to 1,300 horsepower and um, about 1,300, at about 1,300 RPM. Now, in addition to the engine, 
looking along the wall on the uh, against the port wall you can see the air compressor the uh, just a bit of the fire fire pump engine and coming back past the engine we'll look at on the wall we have a uh, fuel transfer pump and other things that are normally kept there on the wall. Okay, now on the starboard side, we have the fresh water pump, a fuel transfer pump, uh, another air compressor, and various tanks for hydraulic and whatever things are needed for the operation of the boat. Behind the main engine on the port side, we have the big Foden uh, generator uh, of 144 kVA that furnishes the power for the whole boat when it was under Navy operation. There was a second generator on the starboard side, but that has been removed. We are now in the control room that controlled the uh, engines and the generators and the operation of the boat from behind the, this is in the engine room behind the, uh, the engines. The room is sort of soundproofed in order to make the, so they can hear communication from the bridge. But you can see some of the instruments that the room is equipped with. You're looking so far at only one side. This is looking towards the bow. Okay, this is a view looking of the control room. Uh, with the instruments on the port side. And behind on the stern side are almost as many as what you see now here on the port side. Now we're coming down the steps into the crew's sleeping quarters. Here we find bunks for the balance of the crew, which amounts to almost 20 men. I'll light back inside a little better if you can. Okay, and now we're looking at the senior sar char sergeant's room. It's a room for two more officers back with the crew's quarters. You have a pretty good idea of the uh, working desks and things in the officers' rooms. A little better view of the bunks and all of uh, of how they look. Side. <laughs> Did I it down? <laughs> you have quarters. The uh, washroom for the crew. There are the wash basins on this side. Wash basins on the uh, port side of the room. You have a shower stall in the corner and you have two water closets uh, on the stern side of the room. Towards the bow from the washroom is a semi-private uh, sleeping quarters for four. Showing the beds. The double bunks against the, 
the port side lockers and double bunks on the opposite side of this room. And this is on the port side of the hallway going down through the cruise quarters. The main dormitory for the crew has bed bunks for 14. Here's the steps that comes down from the hatch for, for the, this particular dormitory. Port wall, here against the port wall are four bunks against the wall for those men. On this side, looking down the hallway, are bunks for two. And on the other side of this are bunks for two more. The lockers, some of the lockers are here at the end of the hall, looking down at the end of the room and next to the engine room. On the starboard side is the heater for the room bunks for two more behind that wall and against the starboard side of the boat are bunks now for four more. Locker spaces are, foot lockers are under the, uh, under all of the bunks and over the whole boat, over the lower, under the lower bunk. Okay, you do have a little uh, space used here against the wall for, co for mirrors and things like that. At each end, on the port side and on the starboard side, are more lockers so that every man of the 14 crew in this room has his own locker, plus the storage underneath the lower bunks. As you, as you look back against the port side again, you can see some of the curtains that the room is equipped with so that uh, each bed has a certain amount of privacy. Okay, from the dormitory for the 14 men, you can look up the hallway towards the stern for the other, for the second ladder to exit out of the dormitory quarters. And on the right is the room for the uh, super sergeant, and on the left was a little semi-private room for four crew. Uh, in some of the boats where they later started to use uh, to add women to the crew, that was their room. Towards the stern from the Dormitory quarters for the crew are rooms for storage of uh, ammunition uh, and uh, supplies, military supplies, with another little room on the side for activating depth bombs, perhaps, and things. And behind this bulkhead is the last room, is the uh, rudder room, with the big... Um, uh, hydraulic steering unit. Here's another one of the little rooms in connection with the uh, activating, perhaps, of them, some of the depth charges or bombs or whatever they're used, the military is using. We're in the rudder room now. Here's a big pump that operates the hydraulic steering system. Uh, here's a hand pump that could work in case of other failure. You're looking at the shaft going down to one of the rudders, and you're looking across now at the big uh, piston uh, assembly that operates the rudders. You have here also a pretty nice workbench and quite a lot of, of cabinet storage for spare parts and things. 
But you notice that on the boat there are a lot of little pockets, rooms and things that you haven't seen that are very, very usable if you adapt the boat for civilian use, for little private areas and uh, possibly uh, cabin spaces. This is a close-up of the uh, steering controls that are on the, like the same units are on the bridge in the operating room and a spare unit that could be operated from the rudder room. Here again is the, uh, the big shaft that carries one of the rudders and the uh, hydraulic pump unit that uh, supplies the power for the steering. On the port side of the rudder room is a nice wire cage for spare parts. But if the captain ever had any problem, I guess he could really use it for jail if he needed it. So this is one of the fluorescent lights in the rudder room. The whole boat is equipped with fluorescent lights like these, as well as the uh, ordinary light bulbs or light, you know, lights using regular light bulbs for both emergency lighting and uh, alarm lighting. <laughs>